Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to the Vitology Podcast, place where we talk about life and life abundant. Ryan, how are you doing? I'm great, Josh. Yeah. Yeah. How are you, man? I'm doing really good. I'm really, really good. You know, this is a uh, this is gonna be a fun one today, right? I can't wait. You can't wait. I can't Why wait. Why is that specifically? Because we are not alone. We're not what? We're not alone. Well, let's find out who's here. Let's find out. Ladies and gentlemen. Drum roll. Hey, Pastor Dennis Keating, right Pastor here with Dennis. The big reveal. Yes. I like that. That's, 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 that's just like kind of making a mansion out of a chicken coop. <laughs> <right there. laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, this is such an honor to have you here. Thank Pastor you. I'm Senator. honored Thank to be you. here Thank and you. be a part of all of this. And it's nice to see everybody virtually. And uh, I was honored to be here this weekend. Man, My blessing. What a powerful weekend. And uh, we we want to get into the into that for sure in a little bit because on this on this podcast as as you all know if you've been tuning in or if you're joining us for the first time we uh, we often talk about things of the day of any sorts but we we really try to dive in kind of behind the scenes of the yeah. sermons and uh, get get the uh, different take yeah we want to know what was on the cutting room floor yes that's exactly you know? there. Probably a few things. Sure. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And if only I had longer to preach, but you know, that's a whole nother day. My, my, so my joke with uh, with Dennis was, you've got 23 minutes because Dennis had um, an ability when he was the senior pastor here to give the guest preacher communion weekend, which only had. 23, 23 minutes 23 minutes yeah, yeah. so yeah. when we were doing uh, three services you had to you had to keep it tight yeah, you know yeah so anyway <laughs> we got we gave you more than all part of see all these responsibilities that you have that are behind the scene that nobody else knows exactly. of nobody until knows. you get into it exactly. and all of a sudden the pressure mounts because if you go too long oh yes yeah all of the Children's workers are mad at you oh, because yes. they're ready to oh, go. Yes. All the parents are mad because they're uh, ready to go. Yeah. And the city of Escondido is mad at you because the traffic has backed up <laughs> yeah, all the way times. to Felicita. And so 23 minutes was that 23 was, that, minutes. that was just right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And there was, there, was, I, there was a certain someone at least uh, – She's come up to me a few times and told me I was four minutes over. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. You and, know who and you are. And how it's going to impact her, yes. her getting out so, of the parking lot. So, you yeah. Know. So they were keeping track. But, they were. Uh, they were. But it was great. It was so oh, good to man. see you. Thank you. For, I was just thrilled to be, be here and to see everybody and be a part of what the Lord's doing here. How did, how did it feel after two almost two and a half years? Uh, September of 2019, last time preaching here. Yeah. How did it feel coming back? Well, um, I, I, quite honestly, I was nervous. Yeah. I was excited um, about sharing the things that I felt like the Lord uh, wanted me to share. But I was just thrilled to see everybody. Yeah. And uh, the things that I have missed the most about it, uh, obviously, are the people and everybody being able to say hi to everybody and um, I watch online at times and see faces and wonder, I wonder how he's doing. I wonder how she's doing. I wonder how their grandkids are doing. Yeah. Uh, because it, it was just my privilege to be a part of people's lives and on their journey. That's right. what we get to do. Yeah. Um, yep. I, I just have loved the music. You know, and I, I sat for a lot of years in front of the string section. Yeah. And to be able to hear violins and cellos, and I, I mean, it's it's a special treat to hear orchestra and the horn section and the Absolutely. drums and all of the percussion side of it and piano and mm. and then the choir. You know, that's the part that still it's to this special. day gets me. You know, uh, just I, I just really love it. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, anyway, so, so I was thrilled to be back and really grateful to be able to share with you. So great. Well. Uh, Irene Phillips is saying, hi, Pastor Dennis. Thanks for bringing the word. Irene, nice Sunday. to see you. Yeah. I saw Shay for a few minutes, so it was yeah. nice to nice to make make uh, reacquaintance with him <laughs> and then to say hello to you as well. Yeah. Well, uh, well, you brought up uh, seeing, talking about other kids, you know, grandkids. You, you've, uh, I, I mean... Uh, it brought me to think, okay, to ask you a little bit about what's what's been going on with yeah, you yeah. over well, these last couple of years. What have you yeah, been well, um, when I retired, um, I just didn't realize that the whole world was going to retire with me. Oh, so, um, I, after I after I uh, stepped back from the, uh, my role here, uh, I did some just decompressing. Yeah. 
and uh, and I I rested. I wasn't exhausted, but I was tired. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, um, so I just rested. And I didn't do a whole lot. Of, I worked outside a lot, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just was in the sun and uh, had a lot of physical times. But I just didn't have to be anywhere or do anything. And so. Um, that was really, really good. And then COVID hit, you know, in, yeah. in March. And so like everybody else, we went into lockdown, fortunately, and my family, we didn't uh, get COVID. Yeah. Um, and uh, my kids had a little a battle. But other than that, the Lord was really, really good to Marsha and me and good. we've been healthy and well. That's great. Um, uh, we had a lot of plans <laughs> like everybody else did. Yeah. yeah of travel and that right. all canceled, yep. you know, and so we uh, had some friends that became our kind of our pod, yeah. if you yeah. will. Good. And we had a, a lot of meals on our back porch Yeah, yeah. and sat away from everybody. And we, like everybody else, cleaned off the table yeah. and squirted down the cans <laughs> and did, oh, it, yes. did, did all of that. And, uh, uh, and I kept ministering. I started um, Grateful Shepherd Ministries, yes, yeah. which um, is a nonprofit that uh, now I get to uh, preach a couple times a month in mm -hmm. different churches. Yeah. I teach at uh, Calvary Chapel Bible College. I'm doing that online okay. yeah. again this semester. I'm going up to a Bible college up in uh, Oregon here in a All few right. weeks, teach minor prophets. Oh, and right on. All right. I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, we had a trip to Israel scheduled this year for March, but we postponed that. that one again. And uh, uh, so yeah. it's still impacting us, but I'm still actively involved in ministry. And Absolutely. I get to meet with different pastors at different times and lay leaders. And sometimes churches call me and elder boards and they say, well, hey, we heard that you retired recently and our pastor's getting ready to retire. What should we do? Oh, yeah. Oh, great. So yeah. I do a little bit of that. Okay. And wow. um so that's great. And then I get to spend a lot of time with my grandkids. Grandkids. Which is, which is really good good for you. Full circle. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's really good. And you've been preaching at the orchard, the orchard every right? what two months or so? Yeah. So? I'm 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 over there every every few months with Assad. I'm thrilled yeah. with what the Lord oh, is doing. They, oh my the goodness. Orchard. They just launched this Sunday this in their new facility. Uh, so great. I got to be there. I, yeah, I got to be did. there. So I actually didn't get to see you preach live, which that was a bummer, but at the same time, it was such a joy to be over there with to see this young church. The orchard is is one of our church plants. When it's seven years ago, uh -huh. yeah. can you believe that? Seven years ago, and uh, they just they just were were given this a beautiful property. I mean, wonderful property that they're uh, they're gonna be able to grow in. It was great. Yeah. It, it was so fun to see so many people coming around them mm -hmm. and serving and pitching in to make that day happen. And especially in the location, it's uh, right next door to Orange Glen High School, just down the street. So uh, I've been really blessed to be able to be involved with yeah. Assad and with the elders yeah. there and with the whole church there. Yeah, so really great. fun for me. Uh, that's so neat. Very that's cool. So neat. Well, I'm sure you'll be back there relatively soon, soon get, to, huh? get to preach in their new... And, and I will be days. there in a couple of weeks. couple so weeks? Like, good. Yeah. So good. I'm excited about that. Good. Well, hey, they're... Uh, they are us, right? I mean, yeah. you know, go so go, go go see Pastor Dennis there. Be good. Yeah. So, um, but back to this whole chaos. I mean, you know, seven seven eight months or so after you you wrap up here, this the world falls apart. How glad are you that you weren't having to make all the decisions right then? <laughs> well, it's a, it's a it's a real interesting yeah. uh, timing. I'll put it that way. Yeah. Um, the way I have said it to people, because I get asked that question, yeah. I'm sure okay. you know, yeah. and um, I, the way I usually answer it is I, I just say that the Lord had mercy on me. <laughs> and because... Wait, wait. What's that say about you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, okay. I mean, no, but it, it know, really is because um, I would not have uh, fared very well under COVID restrictions. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that's why I think the Lord had me move out before this thing came mm. and brought in people who could handle it better than I. Mm. And from a whole, for a whole bunch of different reasons, um, you know, the first is technology mm. and now how technology became a key component in the communication of yeah. the gospel. 
yeah. and how you reached out and touched other people and how we all did it. Mm -hmm. I mean, Zoom has become, a, yeah. you know, a commonplace a platform that everybody knows yep. about yep. Zoom. Yep. And so uh, the whole virtual uh, world and, and that tech, I would not have done well, mm. especially on our staff mm. where I am much more face-to-face -face relational mm -hmm. right. Right. than I am uh over computer so i just wouldn't have done that well hmm. and all of the decisions that were uh needed to be made about canceling services and about do we wear masks don't we what's the government saying what's it not saying how do we do because the backs and the fourths of it all i just wouldn't have handled it that well hmm. and so the lord really had mercy on me and brought in uh, people who could um navigate that mm -hmm. reality mm. better than i not without pain and not without, sure. I mean, yeah, nobody, nobody got through this unscathed and yeah. we're still not completely through it, yeah. but here we are, um, you know, uh, coming up on two years in March here. Yep. Yeah. And so uh, my hat's off to every pastor mm -hmm. who's had to go through the COVID experience mm -hmm. and has been faithful to continue to minister to change and to flex my hats off to you. I praise the Lord for both of you and for the whole church and leadership on it to try to navigate this. I just haven't had to do it. So there it is. Well, the foundation that you helped, that God laid through you really allowed us to continue to move forward. I mean, so I think it was a testament to your faithful ministry well, here as well. Yeah, yeah praise no the Lord. doubt, no doubt. You know, the Lord's Absolutely. in it, so praise the Lord. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a that's an interesting perspective. I I I really appreciate that. And uh um I mean I think it it it's one of those things. You, I mean, none of us, no one was prepared for it. Nope. And you adapt, you know. And uh and I, I'm guessing you would have adapted. You would well, have Well, yeah, somehow. and I, I think I, I think I would have. Um the Lord would have helped me get through it. Um you just asked me about the timing and I totally. continue to come back and I say, the Lord had <laughs> the mercy Lord on good. me. <laughs> and uh, at that point in time, tired would have gone to exhausted. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And so no I've been exhausted before and just uh, the Lord had a little different plan. Yeah. You know, yeah. huh? If I may, the, the, I, I'd love to, I'd love to hear from you because as someone who's led and made really hard decisions throughout in church leadership. You've you've had to you've had to do that, and you see some of the the issues that are involved, and in some of the decisions of closing doors and you know stopping services and all, all the stuff that 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 entails. Um, as you look, not and I don't mean you don't need to you know necessarily be critical of of you know Emmanuel Faith or say anything positive. We're not asking for encouragement here necessarily, but as you saw the church overall deal with some of these decisions do you feel like that uh do you feel like they were doing it the right way do you feel like there were pitfalls they fell into um well i think the answer is uh, yes and no mm -hmm. and i think everybody would probably say that mm -hmm. some um some church leaders handled the pressure of covid pretty well others not so well um yeah. some made issues of certain things and not of other things. I, I guess to I would start in answering that question simply this way. Um, people in leadership have to make decisions mm -hmm. based upon information that you have in this moment. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, you try to think it all through. I mean, this has been, we've done this enough at Emmanuel Faith over our, our long history where mm -hmm. you you try to think it through. What are we going to do? Do we add this? Do we take this away? Do we do this? We don't do this. Um, you know, until that mantle is on your shoulders, you just don't know how heavy a burden it is. Mm -hmm. So I looked at things that I thought, you know, I would probably do that differently, mm -hmm. but it's not my role to criticize it. Mm -hmm. But I just look at it and I think, I wonder how they came to that conclusion mm -hmm. and that perception. And for some of them, I think uh, some of them are given really good answers to why they were doing what they were doing. I think some of those answers were really good answers to the wrong question. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know? Mm -hmm. And so um, I think a lot of them were really good answers to good questions. Mm. And so 
it it brings up a whole different um you know realm of you know what ifs and how could we have done that differently or maybe better right. what emphasis did we have yeah. here or didn't yeah. have here and how did people respond to it the biggest challenge i think for both the church leader and for the uh, congregation as a whole was trying to decide together how we navigate this hmm. and what principles we use to come to our conclusion. Right. And that's where the real rub came in, hmm. that there were a lot of leaders that were thinking differently than the congregation uh. and a, a lot of congregations thinking differently than the leaders. Yeah. Right. And that's what has caused some of the blowback, the some of the divisiveness yep. that... Um, People have come, and I tried to speak to some of that. Yeah, I was this just going to say you, you did, did. Uh, and uh, make comments that I think are being confident about the right things. Uh, it really, is a critical uh, juncture for the church right now. Right. What, what are what are we going to make as our our stand? Right. Mm -hmm. Our boast. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, what's going to be our boast? Here, uh, that we're going to present to a very fractured and a very hurting, broken, opinionated world. Yeah. Yeah. So well, I, I think overall, all to be perfectly honest, I think the church did as well as it could do mm -hmm. under these circumstances. Um, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell won't prevail against it. And yeah. so our master is going to keep building. Yeah, I think one of the biggest issues that I think the church is going to, the evangelical church, is going to have to deal with in days ahead, is we're going to have to redefine success. Mm, yeah, and what what does success mean? And what is a successful church? Yeah, meaning like numbers aren't going to be the determining factor of yeah. as much. Yeah, of right. A and church. I think the there's an old saying among pastors that especially lead pastors, get evaluated by the ABCs of ministries. Okay. Uh, attendance, buildings, and cash. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you go to any pastor's conference around, and you'll typically hear pastors talking, how many people come right. to your church? How many sites do yep. you have? Yep. Is your facility big enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your budget? Right. Yeah. You know? And it's just inbred this huh. competitive pride that sometimes – Mm. makes us define church in, with the wrong terms. Yeah. Mm. And so now in a culture that um, has, oh, what's the right word? Um, transformed the name evangelical into a pejorative. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, no doubt. Know, what will be an, a successful evangelical church? And how will we define that? And it might be different right. than past. I'm going to ask you to look out 10 years. How, how would you answer that? Well, I think, yeah, mm -hmm. um, based on what I know right now. Yeah. I think what's going to happen is um, I think churches are going to get smaller. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't think that, um, I don't think mega churches are going to be gone. Right. I think that though churches are going to get smaller, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that it will come down to what people really want to do in terms of their commitment to Christ and a commitment to live out a scriptural uh, right. mandate. Yeah. yeah. And so um, 10 years from now, I, I see a lot of the same things. I think the evangelical church has to come back to its core message and its core principles. Mm -hmm. And this will play a little bit of my hand in the previous question that you had. Mm -hmm. if, if we as believers don't transform the name evangelical mm -hmm. back to a biblical mandate that we love better than other people do, mm -hmm. then evangelical will continue to be a politically divisive yeah. term wow. that will stigmatize mm -hmm. and drive people away. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the term evangelical. Yeah. I hope we can rescue it. Yeah. 
but the only way that it will be. So I hope that the evangelical church will come back to that place where it right. says, um, love Esco, mm -hmm. right. uh, yeah. love my neighbor. I, I, yeah. I was wearing a mask this weekend, yeah. not only for myself, but there were a lot of people. I didn't know if I've got this bug or not. Mm -hmm. I don't want to infect anybody else. And right. that's been my whole approach on this whole thing, that it's mm -hmm. not so much about me, but it's about everybody else. Now, that's not saying that everybody else has to wear a mask. Right. It, this is this is my conviction. Yeah. And so I that's what I do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yep. And uh, so I think that if we can come back to that, uh, I, I think what you're going to see is people are going to, going to continue to move out towards some edges here. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that in my opinion, that the idea that America is the Christian nation that we have to reclaim mm -hmm. and restore mm -hmm. politically, we're just bearing the fruit of, I think, of the 1970s, mm -hmm. where we got off track. Mm -hmm. That's just my humble opinion. Mm -hmm. And for the evangelical church to survive, my humble opinion, that the church has to come back to its primary uh, boast and primary mandate, that we are about the gospel and Christ crucified, because oh it's the only hope of the world. Uh, yes, uh, my goodness. I, we could end there, and that would be uh, that would be enough, <laughs> Dennis. That have me back. Yeah, that <laughs> is a uh, no. Uh, yes, <laughs> please. That that's a that is so powerful that um, and, and it fits so well with with what you shared. Mm -hmm. Um, the way that the way that that you tie that in the idea of boasting, kind of transformed that idea of boasting, right? You know, and yeah. uh, and turned it into. Uh, where our boast really is right now. I want to get into that, um, but I know we've got a lot of viewers here who are um, just, let me just say hi. And then we're going to start. I'm going to let you ask the first sermon question. Okay. Whatever, whatever you want. But uh, we've got uh, Greg Hill saying hi. Hi, and, Greg. Uh, nice to, and nice Teresa, to see you this weekend. Hey, Teresa. <laughs> Hillary says she's, uh, Hillary, right? Is that, yeah, yeah she's yeah. Uh, been there since 1995 with you. And oh, so, uh, yeah. That, that's going back there. Yeah, I, I want to say, I'm going to guess this is John Roberts using Emmanuel Faith, but uh, he's is. saying it's great to have Nancy you. Lane had a great question up there. Okay, good. Yeah. Let's, let's go. Maybe we'll start with her. Mimi says. Not an easy question, so you can blame okay. Nancy Love, for Grateful this one, Shepherd, but, she says. Yeah. Look forward to uh, the word every week, she says. Uh, Mark, Mark Bennett. Hello, mm -hmm. my friends. Hello, friend. Yeah, it's a blessing to see you all at the same time. And, uh, and then Nancy. The, Nancy Lane. And uh, oh man, we they keep coming in today. But Hi, Nancy. Uh, Nancy says, um, "Hey everybody, hey what? John Roberts. John Roberts is part of our, my college group back in the early 1980s. Right on. So oh, hey, oh, that's he and great. His, his dear Sandy. I mean, yeah. just long connections to a lot of people. So great, mm -hmm. so great. Okay. Oh wow, there there's questions coming in. We may not even need to ask any. Yeah. So, um, but um, Nancy says, "What what is an example of the right answer?" to the wrong question. Okay. You'd mentioned that in, in the way that, uh, you know, some pastors were, were giving the right answer to the right question. And it was a good thing, but can you think of an example at the top of your head? Yeah. I'll, I'll give you the example that's in the, the top of my list. Um, oh, and by the way, that is Greg asking this question. So <laughs> he's <laughs> sorry. Okay. He's using he's using he's the using, default Facebook. <laughs> so there you go. Okay. Where to go, Greg? My friend, then don't yes. answer. Uh, <laughs> so now you can just. Um, I, I, the, the top of my list has to do with the mask mandate. Yeah. And what uh, the uh, governor of California did mm -hmm. in mandating masks in worship services and when can you meet and who has to do what and separate and everything else. And there, there are a lot of churches that. Um, uh, were persuaded according to a certain conviction. Right. And I, I've got no criticism to anybody. Let each person be persuaded, it says, yeah. of his own convictions, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what the apostle said. And so um, I think what happened is uh, you got a lot of answers being given to the question about religious freedom mm -hmm. and about the mm -hmm. role of government in the life of the church and the yeah. government telling the church what it can and what it can't do. And a lot of pastors and uh, lay elders spent a great deal of time writing about that and wrote com 
compelling compelling responses yeah. Yeah. to government <laughs> overreach. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, I just uh, approach it from a little different perspective. I didn't see it as government overreach. Mm. I think it was government trying to protect its people and do its job. They didn't yeah. know any better. Looking back, they, right. they were leading. Now, again, I'm not saying I support any this sure. no. governor or anything. I'm not saying any of that. But what I think happened is all of a sudden the narrative shifted from corporate community mm. and protecting the least among us, yeah. which I think we've got chapter and verse on. Mm -hmm. We do mm -hmm. what the Lord says we are to do. And I think that's where the message got off base. Yeah. And yeah. all of a sudden we're getting the right answer, but to the wrong question. Uh, I think the church has always been called Romans 13, uh, 1 Peter 2 has always been called to live in submission to the governing authorities. Right. We've got chapter and verse on yeah. that. Uh, are we to be the moral conscience of the government? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the church has mm -hmm. to stand up mm -hmm. and say, this is the biblical principle. Mm -hmm. This is right. what this means. And to do so without wavering and without yeah. fear and go ahead and take our tax exempt status. You know, we're going to make this stand. Right. I just mm -hmm. want to make mm -hmm. that stand for the mm -hmm. right issue. Right. Yeah. yeah. You see, and so rather than spending all the time about government overreach and this, yeah. that, and the other, yeah. I think we should have spent our time answering the question, how do I best love my neighbor as myself? Mm -hmm. Yes. How do I best care for the elderly? Mm. And uh, you know, and this this is personal to me because uh, I've I've buried some friends. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so this is personal to me mm -hmm. that that I carry a scriptural mandate in my heart as a follower of Jesus, living in the way of Jesus with the heart of Jesus. That I want to take care of those around me, and if that means that I put on a mask, then I'll put on the mask. Right. You know. Yeah. So that is just, that would be one example. Mm -hmm. And I think it's maybe the primary example for mm -hmm. the church and church mm -hmm. leadership and where it's going in the future. Right. And I think that if we don't come back hmm. to that boasting, mm. then I think it's going to be, a, 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 well, I think you'll see the impact of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because everybody in the world is looking hmm. at us and has kind of written us off as, you know, crazy and going to the edge mm. about what I think are some of the wrong issues. Right. Oh, man. Right. You know, Jesus that, said, I will build my church. He he didn't say where he would build it. And, <laughs> and you know, there are areas of the world that church is continuing to flourish. And I think for us in the States, we're, I don't not that we're at a crossroads, but I do think we're at a recalibration point to say, what are we going to be about over the next 20, 30 years? Mm -hmm. And is it going to be about power or is, are we going to long for genuine influence in people's lives and to point them to Jesus? And I, I think that's, we're, we're getting to a point where we're going to have to decide. Yeah. 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 Mm. Well, then I really appreciate that answer. And it, and it's clear, even your, your humility about some of the, uh, uh, your, the grace that you give to some of the leaders, okay, that, that this governor, that whatever doctor, whatever, that are making hard decisions, that kind of humility only comes from somebody who's been in tough places and had to make hard decisions and have gotten, you know, pushback from every side, right? I mean, you've been in those places and it's not easy. It's not, e it's not easy making those hard decisions, is it? No, yeah. uh, the, the mantle of leadership is heavy at times. Mm -hmm. And um, because uh, it involves people. Yeah. And we all love people or else we wouldn't uh, be in this world. And God has put it on our hearts to do yeah. that. And mm -hmm. we try to do yeah. it as best we possibly can. But, yeah. you know, I've, I have convictions on the best way for us to do that. Mm -hmm. That's how we kind of mm -hmm. get played out. Yeah. Yeah. In, uh, during your message, Dan, you mentioned this celebrity culture within Christianity mm -hmm. and called it out and said, we, we can't go there anymore. Um, I'm, I'm curious, in your mind, what do you think, what's behind that desire mm -hmm. for people to 
have a celebrity worship leader, pastor, whatever, right? What, what's that? What's the stirring in their heart? And then how do you think in practical ways you tried your best to say, mm, I'm not going there over the course of your ministry? Mm. Yeah, well, that, that's a great question, Ron. And I don't know if I have all of the answers on that, but um, I guess I would just tell you, uh, I'll tell you the quick story okay, and yeah. then maybe get into a little bit more detail on it. Um, I've mentioned before publicly in the church that my predecessor, uh, Dr. Richard Strauss, uh, when Richard was sick um, with uh, bone cancer, um, and I was uh, asked to ham and egg with him mm -hmm. and then to take on some additional responsibilities. Uh, I went to Richard and asked, what's the best advice that you could give me as a lead pastor, a senior pastor of the church? Just and, real quick, ham and egg is a oh, term. <laughs> <laughs> he was preaching with him. I, just, I, just, <laughs> I like it. I just aged myself right there and kind of no, went. No. Sorry, uh, continue. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I asked Richard, I said, what's the, what's the key? And he said, uh, stay low before the Lord. Mm. Best advice I've ever gotten. Mm. Bar none. Best wow. advice. Just stay low before the Lord. And so um, I know in First Peter, God is opposed mm. to the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty right. hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time. I know mm. that God is with the humble. Mm -hmm. He supports yeah. the humble. Yeah. And this exaltation of self to the point of saying, I have to develop a brand right. of who I am in order to promote my ministry online. Because I think some of this is driven by the realities of technology and online presence mm -hmm. and what do you have to do to get the most likes mm -hmm. and yep. the most people going. And so we have to be the most professional. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think what happens is that gets into a person's heart, yeah. a woman or a man, and and I'm susceptible to it. Hmm. We all are. That somehow that pride hmm. comes in that says, look at me, hmm. rather than look at him. Hmm. And it is a battle all hmm. of the time when people compare you or yeah. compare your ministry and you end up on the short end of that. Mm -hmm. And I'll, again, I'll give you some of the examples that happen. Uh, I get up, I preach my heart out, and someone walks up to me as soon as I'm done and says, hey, uh, Dennis, did you hear what Dr. Jeremiah said this morning? <laughs> <laughs> and so... Um, I know who that is. Okay, right. so <laughs> she's still listening to Jeremy. Well, and I no, and, just kidding, and just Dave kidding. is a great preacher, and <laughs> I have got nothing against yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. And that's not yeah. the, that's not the point, <laughs> of, you know. But it all of a sudden now in my heart. Oh yeah. The issue yeah. isn't hers. The issue no. is mine. Yeah. In yeah. my heart, all of a sudden, it's yeah. He's better than I am, aren't I? <laughs> And it's in the weakness of that human flesh and in the weakness right. of my own heart yeah. that all of a sudden I start comparing and next thing you know, yeah. am I trying to one-up somebody right. Right. and becoming more yeah. concerned about certain things? And the performance yeah. and that balance mm -hmm. that is so hard to attain sometimes and maintain of pursuing excellence in our worship mm -hmm. and the things that are beautiful, that are pleasing to the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, I just think that sometimes it gets equated with a performance uh, mentality, attitude, mm -hmm. approach, mm -hmm. where we don't necessarily talk about these things. And mm -hmm. um so you, you're going to kind of always live within this balance, but I, I really do think that what's happened is, um, and a lot of people have listened to the Mars Hills podcast yeah, from yeah, Christianity yeah. To Today yeah. and all that happened with Mark up there. And, um, you know, I just know, having been in, in that role, that um, 
it's very, very easy to start believing mm-hmm. what everybody's saying about you. Oh, and if you're not, if you're not constantly aware of that, well, you can start heading down and thinking you're a big deal, right. you know, when, hmm. you know, you're not much of nothing. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I just kind of lived and I approached all of that, mm. um, my ministry that way. Yeah. That I didn't expect to be treated differently. Right. Though I liked it at times, mm-hmm. quite frankly. Um, and I just had to be careful that I didn't like it, you know, to the point of where I manipulated it or used it in mm-hmm. order to become more popular with people. People. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing that it does is, but you, you just, the presentation of your truth mm-hmm. and the things that you preach on and the things that you don't preach on. Right start to take on a certain flavor and a certain yep. color yeah. and hmm. and how I, you know, do the music thing and what all of that. Hmm. And I think just talking about it, hmm. I, I, it really is the key to pulling the plug on it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Okay. Getting it. Naming it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Naming yeah. it. And yeah. Right. This and just is, saying it out loud, you know, this is a temptation. Mm. Right. In all of our parts. Hmm. And whether you're in a church of 50 or you're a church hmm. of 50,000, it's the same issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I'm making it more about, I'm becoming the boast. Right. Mm. You know, right. It seemed like you maintained close, close relationships with people throughout your pastorate, people on staff, people outside of staff. Did those people have the ability to speak into your life? Yeah. And, 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 um, ask me some hard questions Mm -hmm. in the same way that I ask people of hard, you know, hard questions of people. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, having a wife that, you know, would listen and had reality, (laughs) you know, (laughs) in mind. And it's a uh, gift from the Lord. Yes, indeed. And she didn't think you were a celebrity. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, (laughs) you know, my, my wife knows me and knows my imperfections Mm -hmm. and, um, so there's just no reason to hide it. Mm. Uh, ah. and especially the older that I, I have gotten, mm. the more I recognize my frailty and the more I can see frailty in everybody else. And right. I just realize, Hey, we're all the same in this. If it wasn't for Jesus, yeah. we, we'd be lost forever. Yeah. And so, hmm. so why pretend mm. like I'm something big? Yeah. I'm not. So. That's kind of has been my approach to it. Hmm. And I I was really privileged to be around some very, very godly men uh, early on who had a right perspective, right heart towards it all and weren't enamored by it. And Hmm. there there it is. Hmm. I I love that because, you know, I've gotten to hear a little of your story growing up because one of your first your first points of of this was to remember your calling, right? Of, of that's how we we keep that we boast about the right things, right? And you know, I think you were making the point that uh, that uh, God seems to choose the people that uh, the ways and the things that aren't the normal things, right? Not the things that the world chooses. Right. Um, it just got me thinking. You know, when when you were growing up, were you the type of person that they would have said, "Yep, that's going to be a pastor"? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> you know, uh, I'd be dead now. Hmm. Odds are I'd be dead. Hmm. Well, Drunk driving, drugged out. Hmm. I, I'd be dead hmm. somewhere. And Jesus saved me. Hmm. That's all I could. Uh, Jesus saved me. Hmm. I love the Lord. Jesus saved me. And I just want to say thank you to him every single day of my life. Amen. And whether, however, ah. that would work out, then there it was. Mm. And I was selfish and self-centered and manipulative mm. and egotistical, and still battle all those things. Mm. And yet, God through His Spirit did some things in me and helped me, and used some of those things that were in me, used some of my personality sure. yeah. um, mm. that. I've always been kind of people oriented. I, mm-hmm. uh, conversation comes mm-hmm. somewhat easy to me. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. 
I try to be nice to people. Uh, but there it is. Yeah. So I don't really, there, there isn't a whole lot to boast about. So. <laughs> well, you know, when you, just, when you well, just stop and start, start adding up the, the balance sheet on that one. <laughs> I well, I love that. That's good. I just love that, and and I thought that was that's such a that's such a powerful example that that we've all got to look back and remember that it wasn't, you know, by the grace of God to go any of us right. right. Um, that that's such a great great reminder that it's not boasting in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that that was Paul's point. Of, that I tried to drive it home, but by His doing, yes, yeah. you are in Christ, and that. You know, you talk about things that ended up on the cutting room floor. You could go a uh, long ways on that by his doing. By his doing. Uh -huh. And oh. everything that he uh -huh. did from the sovereign choice, yes. right. yeah, eternity past, yep. to yeah, yeah. how we led and the, the movement of the spirit that right. quickened uh -huh. us and brought us to life and how that then showed itself in the choices that yes. we made yeah. and yes. believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, it, it, but it, still comes back to that same thing i didn't have anything to do with it right uh -huh. you know he initiated all of that and uh i was privileged to hear the gospel and respond yeah. to it and yeah here i am hmm. praise the lord huh? praise the lord for that then one of the interesting um, parts of the text that you preached to me was this idea of not many of you were wise right it's almost <laughs> this like it it, it Put down, you could read it like that. Like, you guys weren't the brightest. I mean, you could have picked somebody else, right? <laughs> yeah. um, and and then yet, as we look back now on 2,000 years of church history, we see the church, at least I do, as this beacon of, man, like some of the most beautiful artwork, mm -hmm. some of the most rich literature, you know, some of the most brilliant minds. You know, people like Aquinas or um, Calvin or... C.S. Lewis, people like that, that God has just really used for the glory of his name. And I started to wonder about that tension point of, yeah, they weren't wise. And yet now God seems to be um, like elevating the church in different ways than it was originally elevated in that world of intellect and knowledge and sciences and literature. And I don't know if, it, did you think about that at all? And, and as you dove into that message and how would you engage that ten, tension? Yeah, well, I think some of it um, is in the defining of wise. Wise is not synonymous with smart. Right, that's a good point. It's yeah. is not synonymous with intelligent uh, uh, uh. or necessarily with uneducated sophos uh, in terms of yep. sophistry and the way that you yeah, explained yeah. it, that rhetorical and yeah. oratory ability and and philosophical debate and everything that the Greeks put such a high value on. Yeah, mm -hmm. huge. And um, I think the, again, where my emphasis would go in that is I don't think the church members um, as a general rule, it, 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 it didn't say that there weren't any Mm. But there were not many. Not many. Yeah, that's okay. true. Okay. That's, and yeah, so yeah, I yeah. think there are some yeah, yeah. people, like I'm really glad that um, uh, Bill Craig, William Lane Craig, mm -hmm. you know, I'm I'm really glad he's on our side. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. he is brilliant. And yeah. all of the, the, the doctors of philosophy, sure. and especially at my alma mater at, at Talbot, Talbot yep. Seminary, that have had this niche in... Um, I, I really think that all of those things will prove that the foundation that they uh, built their wisdom on, if you will, mm -hmm. right, is a solid conviction mm -hmm. about God's role yes. in that wisdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is not an atheistic approach to that wisdom, mm -hmm. but it is a very theistic approach that understands God's role in God's mm -hmm. place. And I think that's what in mm -hmm. this culture today, the need is, is for women and men uh, who can see that sophos, that wisdom, yeah. even that philosophical debate through the eyes of the biblical principle of God's existence and the reality yeah. of Christ crucified, and that can then speak to mm. those realities that our culture is dealing with right now. Right. Be it old earth realities, and uh -huh. that has been around mm -hmm. for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. right. Be it the um, the whole 
uh, justice issue mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how yeah. that fits and uh, people's understanding of critical race theory and mm -hmm. how does Christianity fit within yeah. the eth ethnic uh, worldview that our country was mm -hmm. created on and is CRT even a thing right. and all of Mm. Having people who can speak to those, yes. yeah. but to do it with that foundation of a biblical right. wisdom, yes. that's what I think the real need is. Oh, it's just so when good. you throw Jesus out. Right, right. And then all of a sudden now we're talking about these issues, but we're forgetting the boast yeah. of Christ crucified and the issue of mm. sin. Mm. Yep. Yeah. That then becomes to me the, the most fundamental issue of all humanistic worldviews hmm. do not address the most fundamental issue no, of don't. humanity, and that's mm -hmm. sin mm -hmm. and its impact upon us and uh, the evil and the wickedness of the human heart and the assumption that we can somehow better ourselves and move beyond that without a renewal of the heart. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I just keep coming, and that's what I see in history with these most brilliant men. Yeah, all had that. They did as the foundation. Yes, that understanding that without Jesus changing our hearts, there won't be any wisdom down the road. Right. See, and we'll come up with different ideas, and that's what uh, yeah. You know, you could dive all the way into Romans one, and off you go. Yep, because mm. you come up with a whole different worldview. Right. I sort of think of it as like uh, one of those giant Jenga sets where you pull that one out of the bottom and the whole thing the just whole tumbles down. down. It doesn't That's matter great what type of brilliance is on top yeah. of it. You pull that one out and the whole thing crumbles. In the, in the long run, it'll show that it crumbles. Yeah. yeah. In the short term, you start to see, well, yeah, you know, maybe they've got some, you know, something going on here. Mm -hmm. And but then I stop and I think. What do I do about my sin? Mm. And I, I don't know if I'm going to lead with that discussion, you mm. know, out right, in, right. The, in the yeah. culture right now. But at some point in time, that's it's my boast. Get there. It's got to yeah. get there. And unless yeah. I come back to that, and that's the problem within it, we don't, we come back to that. Yeah. We, we kind of have left that out here and we're focused on all these other things that I think somehow maybe we're right. just missing it. Well, and I, and in First Corinthians two, Paul ta starts talking about the the message that your faith rests on, that is either the wisdom of men or the power of God, and but it can't be both, right? And I think that to to your point, there is no message mm -hmm. out there that other than the cross of Christ that allows us to adequately deal with the problem that sin creates. Yeah, mm -hmm. Amen. I. I, I what, as soon as I heard you were doing First Corinthians, I thought, boy, the Holy Spirit has really led Ryan on this one. Because as soon as I thought, oh, this is the perfect book for it, this time in this culture. Uh, it, so it really, feel, well it felt like it. Yeah. You know, when oh, we were God, talking really. about what we were going to preach through in 2022, I thought, wow, this. Well, the Lord really led you, and I, I, I think chapters two and following really will be. So I'm excited for the church and excited for everybody as we really listen yeah. to what the word says. Absolutely. All right. Man. So um, we've got a few minutes left in. I, okay. I had somebody ask me, and I didn't know why. They said, I was expecting Dennis to say, if you have your Bible today, <laughs> and I, I hope do. you do. Yeah. So right. did you forget or was it an intention, <laughs> intentional omission? It was an intentional omission. Was it? Okay. Yeah, because I, again, <laughs> and, uh, and it's partly because... Um, I've started using my phone more and more, <laughs> and uh, I always bring a Bible with me, and I have sure. my Bible Absolutely. with me, but yeah. um, having my phone with me and all the different translations on my phone, I can see it, its usefulness, and that was the time, and I had some fun with it in the first hour <laughs> with yeah. it, but yes. uh, I'm really glad people do bring their Bibles and have that kind of, whether it's on their phone or in in uh, paperback or in leather, however you, yeah, however exactly. you get it. Right on, right it. on. I love it. That's so good. Hey, there's some uh, few more people to say hi. I just uh, I want to I want to get them in. Um, here's Bill and Cindy Martin are just saying hi here, and hi. Juan Morales is saying Como esta? Como esta? Yeah. <laughs> All right, he misses you, uh, Sandy, Sandy France, France. Sandy from, France. Uh, yes. Moved out to 
Oh, goodness. Arizona. Arizona, Arizona yeah. Arizona. And yeah, uh, yeah. she's saying hi. And so it was John Roberts earlier. He's saying hi again. And, uh, you know, he, she got the ham and egg thing. Mimi did. Good. Good. That's good to know. Um, <laughs> hi, oh, man. We got some. Uh, there's some other questions here. I don't know if we'll get time to to get to. But, uh, oh, Nancy. Oh, that's too, too kind. Um, she's just saying thank you for for humble leadership here. Mm -hmm. Um so, oh, Lisa's saying hi. Now everybody's jumping in here. Um, Andrea is saying hello. Hello, Andrea. And uh, it's so good to have so many of you joining us today. From Taiwan. From oh, Taiwan. How cool. Wow. How cool. Okay. You know, um, what a what a powerful um, uh, what a powerful ending. I, I love the the way you you brought the the the, the sculpture David. Yeah, to life and the the lump of clay. I wrote this site. This neglected, imperfect lump of stone becomes something beautiful in God's eyes. Mm. And you know, one of the things I love is that it's the it's the whole thing. So we can't, you know. And this is I think this is shown in this in this podcast and kind of some of your comments about humble leadership before and about boasting it, about Jesus. It, it's not it's not just one or the other. It's a full package coming together as one. It's it is as you already said it living in the way of Jesus with the heart of Jesus. So saying the things Jesus would say, um, preaching the gospel, boasting about Jesus, but there's a way that we do it as well. Because that that I think mm -hmm. you were you spoke about celebrity culture. And if I had one critique about celebrity culture is that they can sometimes see that, think that the ends justify the means. Like if they just, you know, if enough people come to Christ, then it doesn't matter how I live or what I do or how I hurt people around me. Because that, is, you know, as long as something gets done. And so I just want to say that thank you to you for, to, to Dennis, for, for uh, your humble leadership throughout this time. I think Nancy hit it on the head and mm -hmm. um, you've set this church up well. Oh, as you wow. said, to, absolutely to 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 weather some of this. I don't know that we're. I can. I don't know if we can say we're through it. Um, we pray. Maybe the worst of it. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe the worst of yeah. it. Yeah. And I thank you. That's really nice of you to say. I mean, and to everybody here, just uh, know that I love you, and I'm just really privileged uh, to continue to be a part of what the Lord is doing at Emmanuel Faith Church. You know, because yeah. He hasn't stopped. Amen. And with one person coming and another person going, and um, there's an old saying among preachers that if God can speak through Balaam's donkey, he could probably speak through me. And so um, I, I just recognize that and recognize that God's very much at work and mm -hmm. we'll just keep going mm -hmm. and... Um, we plant and we water, but mm. God gives the growth. And so we try yeah. to live within that balance and wait, just wait and see, stay faithful and see how he blesses it. And that was the strong emphasis that Ryan gave in those first messages on First mm -hmm. Corinthians mm -hmm. of God's faithfulness. That God's going to do this. So yeah. He'll bring it to pass. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Well, Dan, every every once in a while, I bring a book and tell people about a book that I've read that maybe they'd enjoy. Um, I'm going to, I, sorry, I didn't ask you this before, but have you read any good books lately that you would either recommend or not? You can say, yeah. I read this and yeah. don't, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I read a lot when it comes to biblical related stuff. Yep. And, um, it's not always for, you know, the <laughs> average consumption, <laughs> if you will. But I, uh, what I'm reading right now is um, I've gone back to reading Pilgrim's Progress. Oh, okay. And some of it is because of the allegorical nature of it. Uh -huh. Some of it is the understanding of what Christian mm -hmm. and that yeah. process mm -hmm. meant for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how through that mm -hmm. hardship of what he went through, mm -hmm. he... He didn't please everybody. Mm -hmm. He just continued on to where right. the evangelist told him to go. Right. Uh -huh. And I just thought, you know, Lord, for where I am and where the church is right now, hmm. it might be uh -huh. a 
a kind of a solo journey sometimes yep. huh. when Mr. Pliable and uh, yeah. comes along yeah. and and Mr. Complaint comes along yeah. and tries to draw you back to the city huh. of destruction. And so I, I just thought, you know, I'm going to go back and in the evening, just sit with this hmm. and read That's this. Wow. And there it is. That's what I'm reading right now. And it's, I love it. it's, a long <laughs> yeah it, it is so it long. is it it's is a long story as yeah, is absolutely. as is the pilgrim's progress it's yes. been long for us anyway huh. I, if you'd like to read along with me and interact about it i'd be happy to do all that right. oh that's great all right that's great i love it i love it well well there's already calls to to have to have you back here at some so, point so we'll get um, you back so yeah, I'd Hillary, love to, I'd love her, to come her, back her first time watching she says that uh she'd watch again i think if not i mean right, just i don't know if she but, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, that's great. Well, I think uh, I think I think a couple of people wouldn't mind you coming back and preaching every so often, too. So and myself included. Me, too. This included. Absolutely. So, um, we so, so appreciate you being here. Um, I, I think it's I mean, I, there's I keep reading comments and uh, I'm getting distracted. So um, we've got we, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's yeah. tuning in here. Um, great message. Uh, Juan Morales is saying, and um, man, some other questions I can't even get to. But uh, oh man, Don Talley is saying hello there. Hey um, Don, that's great. Well, well, you How guys, cool. I think uh, I think that's about gonna do it for today. Um, what a what a privilege. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, no, my, my privilege. Yeah. So thanks very very much. Uh, glad to do it and. Again, to everybody, God bless you all, and I love you, and thanks for the encouragement that you give to me. So it keeps yeah. me going. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, until next time, everybody, uh, keep pursuing the life that Jesus has to offer. And uh, we'll keep trying to study it here. God bless, everybody. God bless. Take care.